Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Stay from Coloring Pages Bliss. In this video, I will be reviewing and demonstrating the recycled colored pencils by Tom Bow. The first half of this video, we will take a close look at these pencils and put them through a series of tests to help answer our questions. The second half of this video, I will demonstrate how they perform by coloring this cute little owl that I recently drew. You can download and print this and many more coloring pages from my website. As always, there are links to this coloring page, links to all the products that you will see in this video, and links to my Facebook page and website and other social media outlets in the description below. Before I get started, let me state that I always give my honest opinion in reviews. I make every effort to be accurate about all details. But remember, please do your own research before making any purchases. Let's get started. Okay, so Tombow here has released a set of recycled color pencils, and these are a lot of fun. And what is really exciting to me about this set of pencils is the price range and the quality that you get for the pencils. Now, they're marketed to artists and colorists. They are a really nice line of pencils, and they come in sets of 24, 12, 5, and 2. And they're not available open stock, so you can't replace individual pencils as they run out. Now, the price range for this kind of pencil is really exciting. This 24 set, I've seen anywhere from $14 to $22, depending on what website you go to. So you can get an entire set of 24 pencils for around $14, which is really cool. Now, the 12 set is around $8 to $11. And then they have smaller sets that don't come in the tin. You can get them as small as two, which is their metallics, or you can get them in fives, which they come in different groups, like this one here, it says is their primary set. And these cost around five to nine dollars, depending on the website. And this set here, I believe was around two dollars, depending on the website. So it's really cool that you can get these smaller sets and it's a higher quality pencil. So if you get them in the smaller sets, you're going to get them in this kind of packaging here. And it does have some good details about the sets on the back, which is nice. But of course, what is exciting to me is that the 24 and the 12 come in a tin case, which is really nice for storage. The back is just plain and the front is a little bit of English, but a whole lot of Japanese. And that's kind of the story on these pencils all together. So as an American, you're gonna have a little culture shock the first time you receive these pencils. So be prepared for that. But don't be too American. Let's embrace the Japanese because this is a cool product. Now let's open this up and look more at the packaging. Now, like I said, this is a lot of Japanese in here and I helped myself when I first got this by adding a little piece of washi tape and adding some um, numbers in here to help me. Now they have all the names of the colors inside the packaging and then some Japanese here that of course means nothing to me and then all of this is in Japanese here as well. And then the packaging is really nice. They have the pencils all nicely laid out here and a nice little cradle for each pencil so this is really top-notch packaging for the price point and then I like I said I put it down a piece of washi tape and I put down the number of each um, pencil color because when you pick up your pencil um, the, there it says on here Tombow recycled color pencil but then everything else is in Japanese on here except you do get a number for each color so I wanted to be able to coordinate the color with the number and all you have is a color name here and a number here so that's what I did I matched up the number here with the color name over here and that's why there's a piece of washi tape here 
and some numbers that I've handwritten down. So if you buy this set, you can go ahead and do that like I did here. And I've got all the numbers written out here, so you can go ahead and hit pause and copy those down if you would like to. So let's take a close look at these pencils because they're a lot of fun. So I'm going to pull out a few here and we can take a look at them. Let's lay them out. So the pencils are round and they are open-ended on the back. They are a wax-based pencil and they are 3.05 millimeter core. And one of the things that they talk a lot about when you read about these pencils is that the core itself is firmly bound all the way down through the whole pencil. So they've glued it throughout the whole pencil. So as you work with the pencil, sharpening it, coloring and all of that, we shouldn't have the breakage issues that we have on some of the lesser quality pencils. So that's pretty exciting. Now also the pencils say Tombow Recycled Color Pencil and then again we go into a lot of Japanese here. And so on the other side we've got some, it says CBRE which I assume is recycled and then we've got a number and then a whole lot of Japanese again and that number is your color number. And so that's where we can start coordinating our color swatches and remembering what color we used in our art. They have a really cool um, exterior that's been lacquered. It's a cedar wood, so it's really pretty. I like the natural look. And then if you look closely, here's a pencil where you can see it really good. They use a finger joint technology is what they call it. So basically what they can do is piece together the wood and according to their literature, it helps save some wood and they can use pieces of wood rather than long strips of wood and it helps them to be able to save wood and that's I think where their term recycled is coming from so this is that finger joint technology that they're talking about so I think it gives the pencils a really pretty look you get the different grains and the different colors and hues of the wood so I think it's really fun and the pencils feel good if maybe a little light in the hand but that's all right it feels really good in my hand and they should be really fun to color with so that is the Tombow Recycled Pencils. Now, um, as far as the light fast information, I went on to TombowUSA.com and I did find a very small amount of light fast information. So let me bring that out and we can read it straight from their, fr their frequently asked questions. Okay, so Tombow says, the light fastness of a pigment is how permanent it is or how unaffected it is by light. Light fatness, fastness varies from pigment to pigment and the ratings change based on the color. Generally, colors of light red and dark green tend to be less stable, while neutral tones, dark purples, and fluorescent colors tend to be more stable. And then it goes on to give some hints on how to preserve the quality of your color beyond just coloring it straight from the pencil. So in general they're not giving us very specific details, they're just kind of giving you a general information about the pencil. So their light fast information isn't stellar on their pencils. And this applies to both their recycled line and their erogeton line as far as I can tell from their frequently asked questions page on their website. So here we can see all the colors that come in the 24 set. You get everything from a good set of yellows to a nice dark black. You even get a white. Here I've been testing out how the whites work. And you get two metallics, which is really cool. And when you move it in the light, they even do a little shimmer. We're going to do a little more testing on that on our worksheet over here in just a minute. So you get a good variety for a 24 set. And when you compare their color of the exterior of the pencil to their swatches they do pretty good this is number 15 so let's go over here and look here if anything I would say that the swatches come out just a little bit lighter than the color on the pencil so keep that in mind as you're using them let's look at a couple more just to see this is number four 
let's find that on here which is their chrome yellow. Again, the swatch is a little lighter than the color on the pencil. The only one that I saw a, a big difference with the swatch was their Van Dyke Brown, which is number 32, which I think is right here. And this one, the sample on the pencil seems a lot redder than the actual color that came out. All the others I thought came out really consistent and nice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to use my color wheel, which is sort of my color standard that I'm using throughout all of my color pencil reviews. And we're going to choose some color samples to use on our tests that are on this worksheet. So I'm going to choose a yellow and a green and a blue and a violet and pull them all out. And I'm going to mark them up here on this color sample wheel here. Now. On the smaller sets of color pencils, we might not get an exact green that will match this green, but we'll do the best that we can and choose those up and I'll fill out this color sample wheel and that will set us up and get us ready to run our tests that we're going to perform on these recycled Tombow pencils. If you'd like information on the paper I'm using for this worksheet, please check out the description because I have a link to the video where I just talk about this paper. Okay, I have all the colors picked out for our samples and made a little note on the number in case you'd like to refer to it later. And I am pretty happy with the colors that I was able to pick. The only one that is seems a little off to me is the violet. But like I said, in the smaller sets, we get to choose as close as we can get. So I picked the violet that was as close as possible. Now, on the metallics, I burnished the colors in really good because sometimes when a set provides a metallic, it's actually just another color in the set and not an actual metallic type finish. So when I move this in the light, you're gonna be able to see that it actually catches the light and they've actually given us a true metallics. You'll be able to do some fun effects with this silver and gold that they've provided. Now the first test we get to do is the core usage test. And for this we're going to turn to our brown color, which is the number 31. Let me move the pencils out of the way. Now the way the test is performed is we're going to see how we can lay down the color and how quickly the core is used up. Now they claim that the core on this is a nice strong core, so it should be used up pretty um, easily. We're also going to test the sharpening ability of the pencil. Does it sharpen easily? Does it break easily when we sharpen? When we sharpen it, can we bring it to a point? I'm using a Coombe magnesium steel hand sharpener here and being careful to move the sharpener around the pencil and not the pencil. And that's the best way to protect your pencils when you're sharpening. Okay, so we were able to bring it to a nice tip here. And you can see here is probably where one of those finger joints are. And it did cause a little issue as I was sharpening. I could feel it grab funny when I was sharpening. So now what we're going to do is go over this two inch by two inch square three times. The first time is with light pressure. And what this is going to tell us is if you were coloring or doing art at home and you just were using light pressure, how much pigment goes down with just a nice, even light pressure. Okay, that's the first layer. And you can see we have barely used just a touch of the tip. 
So that seems to be a good usage of the pencil. And we got a nice coverage. The pencil feels nice and smooth doing a light pressure, so that's good. Now the second layer, I'm gonna use a more medium pressure, and we'll see how much of the core we use there. Okay, now that's how much is left of the core after our second layer of a medium pressure. On the third layer, we're going to do a burnishing layer, which means a heavy pressure, and we're going to try to go over the whole two inch by two inch square and try to push in the pigment and remove all the white of the paper and see how far the core will go. If we can do the entire two inch by two inch square, how much will be left, and how will it look when we're done. Another objective of this particular test is the overall feel of the pencil. Does it go on smooth? How does it feel in the hand? Does it feel like a lot of work to get this process done? Okay, there we finished burnishing that third layer in and it went on really smooth. It was a little bit of hard work to get that third layer in, but I, you know, it wasn't too terrible. I've had worse experiences with that third burnishing coverage. And so I would say it was probably a medium effort to get that third um, hard coat on. And there isn't too much as far as the dust that comes off sometimes. And we still have some core left to work with, so I probably could have done a little bit of a bigger square, which is nice, especially considering this is a bit of a smaller core at 3.05 millimeters. And so it does last quite a while. So let's sharpen it now and see if we can bring it back to a point and see how the sharpening goes. Okay, I got it to a nice beautiful point again. Um, and it does seem to be really difficult to sharpen it when it comes right here to this joint. Um, and you can see very vividly where the wood is jointed here. And I was able to get some pretty good curls going, um, but it would stop that curl motion as soon as we reach that joint in the wood. Okay, so the next test we get to do is the visible on black test. And basically what we want to see here now is if you are doing some art or coloring on a very dark surface or a colored paper, will these color pencils show up on that surface? So we're going to use blue, yellow, and red and color out a little swatch and see if we can see it good and if it will be a good pencil choice for that purpose. Okay, now some pencils just lend themselves better to being on a dark surface and these don't perform too well. The yellow we got some color to come through but the other two not so much. So I would say if you are working on a dark surface that the Tombow recycled pencils probably aren't the ones to turn to for that project. So now we're going to go ahead and move down here and do an erasing test. So I'm going to color out a red gradiated um, circle here and then we're going to test it and see how erasable these pencils are. Now they're not marketed to be erased but in our art as all of us know from time to time we need to erase things so it's a good test to do just so that we know as artists how these pencils will act when we do need to erase or sometimes we use the eraser to lift a little bit of the pencil out to add a highlight and do other effects. So I'm going to burnish in some of the color on this end so that we can see how it will erase a really deep color and then it'll be lighter on this end so we'll be able to test the full range of erasing. 
Okay, now this is one of my favorite erasers that I'm using on all of the color pencil reviews, and it's the Factus Black 18 eraser. It's just a really soft eraser, so it doesn't damage the paper, it just will lift some of the pencil up. And let's see how this is going to lift away. Okay. It's about how you would expect a pencil to erase that isn't designed to be erased. So you could probably re remove some mistakes, but not a terrible lot without damaging the paper. Now the next test I like to perform is the black value test. So I like to test out the blacks that I'm given and make sure that it is a nice deep black. Um, sometimes the blacks, um, when you burnish them in, you end up with more of a deep gray color. And when I color with a black pencil, I want to make sure that I have a really good deep tone of a black. So we'll burnish this color in and then we'll test it with my color wheel and see if we get a good deep tone. Okay, so there's our black circle, and on my color wheel here I have a gray scale or a black value scale. I'll just slip this under here, and we can take a peek. So I would say we've got a really nice deep black here. I would put it right at the value 1 or 100% black. So well done Tombow Recycled Pencils for giving us a good black pencil. Okay, now we get to move on to some of the really fun tests here, which are the layering and blending tests. And the first one is a layering test. We're going to use blue, yellow, and brown. So what this is going to test is what, how well these pencils like to layer up. And so we're going to go ahead and lay down with a light to medium pressure across the whole rectangle here. Um, with the first layer which is blue. Okay, now I'm going to do about two-thirds of the rectangle with the yellow and what we're looking for is for it to go a nice green. I'm looking for how it feels as I layer on top of it and I am looking to see if, if I can see the blue through it and how the colors look together. Okay, now that feels really good, and we've got a green tone coming up, but it's still, I can see the blue, and it looks really nice, and it feels good too, working with it. The final layer is the brown, and sometimes in my coloring, um, this is how I'll do my layering, like if the final color is a brown, I'll lay down some other colors underneath it, just to give the brown some depth. So that's why I picked this color combination. I like to do three layers for this test because it will give you a feel of just how much layering these pencils will let you do. And it, this feels really good. Okay, so I feel like I could keep going adding more layers. I don't feel like that that's it. So I'm impressed that with the layering ability with these pencils. And when you look at this third layer here, I, you can still see the yellows and the blues and it even feels like the greens and the browns and it doesn't feel muddy. So I'm really impressed with that. That's a nice layering with these pencils. So now we get to move on to some blending here and I've got four different techniques that we're going to use to test the blendability of these pencils. Um, we're going to start here with the blending Jennifer's rule of blending thirds. If you'd like to learn more about that, there's a link to a video where I describe the rules of Jennifer's rule of blending thirds. And we're going to go ahead and demonstrate it right now. And we're going to use yellow, orange, and red. And this one will help us see if all you use are your pencils for blending and you don't use any other aids to help with blending, how good are these pencils going to blend for you. So I'm also going to turn the paper so it's a better angle for my hand. And you start out by coloring with light medium pressure over the entire rectangle for the first layer. Second layer is your medium tone, or in this case we're using orange, and we're going to go over two-thirds of the rectangle with the orange, light to medium pressure. And then finally the deepest tone, which in this case is my red, is the final third, 
uh, start out with light to medium pressure and then I'll probably go just a little deeper here at the very end. And then back to your middle tone, we're going to go over two thirds of the rectangle again. And then finally your lightest tone or the yellow over the entire square and this will help um, blend out all those colors and smooth it out. Okay, and that turned out really pretty. Um, the blending, it felt like probably would need to spend just a little bit more time here to get a little bit smoother, but if, as you can see, I mean, I think I've gone over it three, four, what, six times? I don't know, I've lost track. <laughs> And I can still come back and keep working on it and adding more layers. So that's really exciting to me that um, these pencils are so workable. You can keep layering in more. If you feel like, oh, I wish I had deepened this up more. I can go in and do more. That's really cool. So it looks really pretty. And I'm quite impressed with the blending just using the pencils alone, no extra tools. Okay, now we're going to move over here and do a blending, and this time we're going to use their white pencil that they provide as an overlay to see if that will help as a blending tool. Not all white pencils will work as a blending tool, so I'd like to see if their white pencil will work. And this time we're going to use red and blue, and we're going to see if we can create some sort of a violet or a purple in between by using their white pencil as the blending tool. And my red is getting a little low, so we're going to take a pause here and sharpen. Okay, now I was having sharpening problems with that brown pencil, and this one sharpened up no problem at all. Look at that, I got a nice long curl for that one. And if you look closely, there wasn't a finger joint there to disrupt the sharpening process. So um, as we go along, I'm gonna keep an eye on that and see if we run into that problem again, or maybe it was just that one pencil had a problem. We'll see. So for this test, what we're going to do is color up two thirds of the rectangle in red. Okay. And then here we've got our blue and we're going to do two thirds of the rectangle in blue and the light to medium pressure, and we're going to overlap in the middle. All right, so in here is where we want to see the violet or the purple appear, and we're starting to see it appear just with the two pencils overlaying with each other. And so now the white will hopefully help that happen even more. I'm using a heavy pressure here. Okay. It's a little streaky, uh, so it didn't work as great as I would hope. Um, like I said, not all white pencils will do this uh, blending effect equally. Some white pencils work better than others. If you look at the swatch chart I created, this is what I've done here, is I've done tiny little swatches of different colors from all the pencils, and then gone over it with a white pencil just to see how it reacts, to see if it will smooth out the strokes of the pencils or not, and I even had difficulties here with just one color at a time, and so I would say that the white pencil in the Tombow recycled set isn't the best at blending colors. So now we're going to come down here and see how these pencils like to blend with odorless mineral spirits. And this is one of my favorite techniques for blending and so I'm always excited to see how the pencils are going to react to this technique. So again we're going to use two pencils and with a medium to light pressure so we get some good pigment down. We're going to cover up this rectangle and do some overlapping. This time we're going to use blue and yellow. Okay, so obviously in the middle we're hoping to get a really pretty green and the odorless mineral spirits is just a solvent that we use and it goes in and breaks down the waxes and the oils and the other binders of the pencil and leaves behind the pigment. 
And so it's a really fun method. Um, some people know it as Gamzal. I'm just using a blending step here that I dip in and soak with the mineral spirits and then use to sort of dissolve all those binders and leave behind the pigments. And like I said, we're looking for a really pretty green and we're looking for smooth blending. We're also looking to see how far, like here you can see the blue is coming way out here past where I colored it. So you can see that the pigment is pretty strong. It's coming out beyond where I colored it. Okay, so I really like how this turned out. I would definitely use mineral spirits with these pencils because pigments of the colors really traveled well, so this would be a fun way to color with these pencils. As always, when you're using mineral spirits, um, be very careful, don't inhale the fumes, and keep them away from your kids and your pets, so just be careful with it. Okay, the last kind of blending we're going to test, of course there's lots of other methods of blending, but this is the four that I've chosen to test with. The last one we're going to do is use a colorless blender pencil. This one that we're testing all of the pencils with is by Prismacolor. And it is just an ordinary pencil with no pigment in it, and you use it to blend colors together, similar to what we did here with the white, only it's colorless. And this time we're going to use yellow and red. We're going to sharpen up the yellow and see how this pencil behaves in the sharpener. Okay, there again we had some good sharpening, but I do want to point out um, here, I think again where that finger joint was, it sort of has broken the wood a little bit and it's exposed more of the lead than I would like. So as I'm coloring, I'm going to be careful to hold the pencil probably this direction so that the weaker point of the lead is down and the lead will be more supported by the wood here as I'm putting pressure down onto the paper. So that's just a little hint I would give you. That happens on more than just this brand. I've seen this happen on other pencils. And so if I ever see this happen to the tip of my pencil and I wanna protect that core as I'm coloring, I'll always turn the pencil and apply pressure this direction just to let the wood support that extra exposed core. Okay, let's turn the paper again. And we're gonna go two thirds across the page again with the yellow, light to medium pressure. Good. And then our red. Okay, so here I have my Prismacolor Premier Colorless Blender. And what we're looking for to find again is a beautiful orange color that will come by blending together this red and yellow of the Tombow Recycled Pencils. And I'm using a medium to heavy pressure. I like how far out this red was pulled as I went over it. That's, to me, that's a sign that there's a lot of pigment there that um, you can use in your coloring. Okay, so that's a gorgeous way to do your blending with these Tombow Recycle Pencils. So I would say, um, any of these three methods here are your best bet as far as this test goes for blending. Um, this has great blendability with the Tombow Recycle Pencils. Lots of fun possibilities. Okay, I just finished doing up my final notes after performing the tests. And overall, I am very impressed with the Recycled Color Pencils by Tombow. Um, they are not as soft as, say, your Prismacolor pencils, but um, as far as most pencils I try, they are definitely some of the softest. Um, they go on really smooth. They layer better than I expected. Um, they do have some issues with sharpening. We've run into a couple issues as we went along, but we didn't have any leads break, despite those issues, so that's okay. 
Um, the erasing was average, but overall, um, these are excellent pencils for the cost. This is a really good value, and I would recommend it for this price point. There's one other thing I'd like to mention about the Tombow Recycled Pencils. Now, this is something we learned during an interview I did at a Pinterest conference here in Salt Lake City a few months ago. Now, there's a link to that interview here in the description of this video. During this interview, we learned that the recycled pencils have the same core as their erogeton line. Now, the erogeton Tombow pencils are quite a bit more expensive. So if you've had your eye on the Tombow erogeton pencils, then these recycled pencils would be a fantastic way for you to purchase a more expensive line of pencil just to sort of see if you like the feel of the core of the pencil. It's a fantastic idea that Tombow has done to give us an opportunity to try the core at a lower price range to see if we like it and when you fall in love with it then you can invest in the entire line of erogeton pencils. Now there is only 24 here and the erogeton line has way more pencils and it's available open stock. Really soon there's going to be a review out that I'm doing here on the erogeton pencils so look for that because I can talk more about the entire line of Erogeton pencils. But I wanted to let you know that this is a fantastic way to try out the core of the Erogeton pencils. Awesome. Thanks for doing that, Tombo. So this completed worksheet and all my other product review worksheets are posted on my website for you to compare so that you can make good decisions going forward with your art purchases. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss future reviews. Now we can move on to the demonstration portion of this video so that I can show you how these beautiful pencils color and we're going to color that cute little owl that I showed you earlier. So we're going to have a lot of fun coloring this owl and I'm going to teach you some techniques so let me set up for that. Okay, I'm going to start by doing a base of yellow ochre on this fence. I'm not sure what color I want to color my bird yet. Um, when you have a set of pencils that are just 24, I tend to think about what colors are going to be a good light, medium, and dark trio to work with because I like to do um, good blending trios and so sometimes it takes me a few minutes just to sort of ponder the set of 24 and think about which trios are going to work best and that I'm most excited about working with. So. While I'm pondering this, I'm going to play around with my fence a bit, and I want the fence to be a, just a classic brown so it doesn't detract from the main attraction, which is my bird. And so I'm going to lay down a base layer, just with really light, kind of messy strokes here of the, let's see, this is number five, which is the yellow, yellow ochre. And I'm not being too precious about this because it's just a base layer to give some depth to this. Okay, now we learned from doing our tests that this set of color pencils really shines with layers. That's where it seems to do its best. So I'm going to play up to its strengths and in this fence add in lots of layers so we get depth in it. So I'm going to go with this Van Dyke Brown here which is number 32 and add in a few more of these little texture strikes. This is that really dark brown and just give it some more grain in the wood. And then when we do the top coat, this is all going to sort of get blended in. It won't look quite so messy, but it'll give it more texture and depth. 
and I can use the Van Dyke Brown in the shadow areas. That'll be a good place to emphasize the shadows. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little green because it's fun to add some different hues into something that is getting layered up like this. So I'm just going to add a few pieces of green layers in here. Not too much, because we don't want to turn the fence green. Still want it to look like wood. Okay, and now I'm going to use my brown, which is 31. This is where I'm going to be a little bit more careful. A light to medium pressure. We're going to blend all of these different colors and layers together and do a little bit harder pressure in the shadows to give it a deeper color and just go through and bring it all together. Okay, now I'm feeling like it's just a little bit, um, I don't know if the word is dingy, um, I wish that the fence was brighter. I really like the peaks of green that are coming through. So I'm going to go back to my yellow ochre now and add in a little bit more to brighten it back up. Ooh, yeah, see how pretty? And again, this is where this set is really fun because um, we can keep on layering. And if we don't like the way something is looking, you can Grab another pencil and keep on layering. How cool is that? Okay. I did pause and do a sharpening and this pencil sharpened up perfectly. So that makes me happy. Now another reason why we're getting a lot of good layers is because of the paper I'm using with my coloring. So don't forget to go check out that video to learn about paper. It does make a difference what kind of paper you're using with your color pencil art. We're gonna color these cute little nails and let's go ahead and play with the metallic silver and use those on the little nail heads. Okay, very fun. Let's lay these back in place so we can find them. Okay, now moving forward, we, we don't want to smudge this. So I have a piece of wax paper, that's what they call it here in the United States. Um, you can use whatever you want to cover your work just so that your hand doesn't smear it as you're moving along. This looks good for us for camera so that you can still see where I'm at. Uh, now we're gonna work on our cute little bird. So now I need to make some decisions on my colors. Okay, so I think I've decided to do um, the light orange as my light and my medium tone will be the orange and my deep tone will be the vermilion. So I've got number 29, 28, and 26. And all three of them could use a sharpening, so this will be a good test again to see how they do. Okay, all three sharpened up beautifully, no problems. I'm going to use Jennifer's Rule of Thirds that we demonstrated in the first half of this video on this. can say is wow isn't that gorgeous that's a beautiful color combination I'm really excited about that so now we need to pick out a color to look really pretty along with that set there so I'm thinking something in the blues this is a really good um, analogous color scheme as we've been learning in our weekly um, Facebook events so across from the color wheel, the, from this analogous color scheme would be the blues. So that's why I'm thinking if we go into the blues, that'll be a good place to be. Let's see, we've got in the blues, they have the light blue and they have sort of an ultramarine 
add a blue, and that's before we get into their purples and violets. So I'm thinking let's do light blue and blue and just do a two color blend because I think that will be really pretty, these two together. So that would be 13 and 15. And we did get a little bit of orange up into this feather. So I'm gonna use my eraser and lift some of that out. Okay, so we'll start by laying down the light. And when you do a two color blend, um, same rule as Jennifer rule of thirds, except we'll just modify it with just two colors. Okay, and then instead of going to a medium tone, we're gonna go straight to the darkest tone and work it in back here to keep that curving look of the wing. And sort of keep the, tar the darker tone at the same place that we were working in the oranges as well. So deeper here and then lighter pressure here. See if we can fake that we've got three pencils. Harder pressure here. And a lighter pressure here. Okay, and then bring back that lighter tone of blue and use it to pull everything together and blend the two colors together. So pretty. Now if I want to, I can bring my darker blue in again and I feel like it could use just a little deepening up here. There. I like that. Just keep that end, the the edges looking deep so it keeps that turning of the, I mean the curving of the wing. Okay, we're gonna keep repeating that in the last bits of the wing. Okay. I'm really happy with that. I think that we faked it and made it so that the eye thinks there's three colors there and there's just the two. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and keep coloring in with just mainly these two colors. So we're using sort of a complementary color scheme here, um, but we're going to primarily use the oranges because I think those are so rich and beautiful. So I'm going to move on in and color this chest area now with the oranges. And again, use the Jennifer's Rule of Thirds. Now here along the bottom of his belly, I want it to feel a little curved in. So I'm not going to go as far as to add the deepest of the three tones here, but I am going to add the middle tone down here to give him just a little rounded tummy here. Well, I love his little tummy. And I think it turned out so cute. And I think this little stripe here would be really pretty in the blue. So let's go with the blue. Okay, and then under here, I'm going to do some blue as well. Okay, 
So I've gone ahead and filled in blue using the same, same technique in several different areas here. And now we're going to go and do the oranges into the rest of the areas. Now we have some decisions to make, like the beak is sitting on top of an orange part and so we want the beak to stand out. So we need to decide whether to go with a deeper tone, like introduce either the golds over here, or we could bring in a brighter yellow, or we could bring in a brown. So we have lots of decisions there. And then we also have his feet that we can make decisions on. And then we have the inside of his eyes, which we could go with a straight black, which would be a really big, bold statement. We could go with a reflective metallic gold, since we have metallics here on this set. So we have lots of decisions that we get to make. So I'm gonna start out by just doing the things I know for sure, which is that I've got this trio of colors that I love and I'm going to go and fill in those areas that I know where I want these and then we can make the hard decisions after that. Okay, so in these smaller areas, it's a good idea to sharpen up your pencils and get them to a really nice tight point so you don't have any mistakes or your pencil going out of the area and blending into the blue by accident. So I'm going to take a break here and resharpen up these pencils. Okay, so I've got the eyes done here with the feathers that come away from the eye and I decided to just keep it to the middle tone and the darkest tone for these feathers. And then up top I decided to keep it to the middle tone and the lightest tone just to give it a little bit of a variety in hue and plus it's such a small area the three tones become really difficult to work with so just to simplify the the technique it was easier to do it that way so now we get to make the big decisions on the eyes and the beak and the feet and I still can't de quite decide what to do on the eyes so I think I'm gonna put it off just for a minute more and go ahead and decide on the feet and the beak so I think I want to go with a lighter tone. So we'll start, of course, with what we've been using here so that it ties in and start with our light orange. But I'm going to bring in the yellow over here. And that's number three. And I also want to play with our gold and bring in some metallic. And that needs to be sharpened. So I'm going to do a base layer of this light orange so that it has the tones of the whole bird. And same up here in the beak. And then I'm going to try this gold along the edge and see how that looks. Ooh, I like that. Okay, and then we're going to bring in the yellow just a little. Yeah, I was thinking it might go really yellow, so don't use too much of this yellow. Just enough to make it stand out so you know it's not a feather, it's something else. And then I'm going to go back to our that peachy light orange color and tone it down just a little bit. Not too much though because we want to go ahead and let it be a different tone. 
and then I'm going to use the gold just a bit down here on the toes to give it a little dimension. Okay, I like that. All right, we've come to the moment where we need to decide on the eyes. And I must say, I really like that gold around that beak. So I think I'm going to use it again and do the gold around the outside of the eye. And then we'll, I think we'll go ahead and use black on the inside of the eye to give it some real impact. Well, I love that. And like I said, you know, when we did that worksheet, we tested that black to make sure it was a good deep black. And this is why I test that because I, I really don't like it when they don't give you a good deep black because when I need a black, I want a black. And look how gorgeous that black looks there. And of course, we've used this metallic gold around the edge and how fun is that? So let's go ahead and finish up the other eye. Look at those stunning eyes. Ooh, I love it. I love how this is turning out. Okay, I'm going to bring him over here a bit and I want to do a little work on the background just to give a little more dimension. It's kind of fun sometimes when you've got some open space to do a little something special. We're going to just give it some grass. So I'm just gonna kind of give the feeling of grass and I'm just doing light to medium strokes to this part of the page. Kind of give it a feeling of a grassy field back behind him. Grasses have a lot of yellows. Grab my bright yellow and add a little yellow in there. Okay. And I don't want to detract too much above here. I don't want to add like a blue sky or anything. Um, I could do some pastel backgrounds if I wanted to. Um, I think though what I'm going to do is with super light pressure, I just want to kind of kiss it with some yellow here. And that will make it feel like it's apart from the page around it and sort of give it a happy glow. Now remember that this coloring page I just colored is available as a downloadable PDF on my website. All the links you need are in the description below. Thanks for watching this color pencil review. Please take a moment to like this video and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I have many more reviews and tutorials here on my channel with live weekly events on my Facebook page. I would love to have you join my fun community. If there is a product you would like me to review, please comment below and I will see what I can do. Thanks again for watching and have a blissful and colorful day. Bye-bye.